how can we design spaces that spaces touch people in a natural way? Those spaces should enable that people can carry out a natural behavior. There is not only the brain of a student coming into a school. It's always the entire student, body, mind and soul, coming into a school. We are talking about a holistic system. Body, mind and soul are always in an interdependency. It is important for us that humans, when they are in spaces, that they feel well. Because feeling well means positive emotions. And the emotions are the important driver for productivity and learning. When you see this picture, you can see some elementary school children working on a project in a small group and they are not sitting on chairs, they are grounded. Nothing is restricting them. For them, it is so important because sitting on the floor means they can carry out a wide range of postural behaviors. They are not sitting in more than one minute on average because they are always heading for comfort and well-being. And again, well-being is an important driver for being productive and learning. Of course, it depends a little bit on the age and on individual necessities. Here we have kids in the elementary school. They are passing sensitive and critical periods of developmental processes, which means important organs are carrying out a developmental process. This is what kids are doing when they are focused on the floor and not sitting in a chair which is restricting their natural behaviors. There are differences concerning adolescences, concerning individuals and concerning the ages. What we can see here are children in elementary school. In such an age, all the sensory system, all the sensors and the brain is building up its individual quality. And I will give you exercise to understand what's behind that, please stand up and do the exercise with me. If you have both hands and you take both hands up and place the right hand right to your face and the left hand left to your face. Now I have a question to you. Can you see me? And I expect when you are opposite to me, you can see me. But the question, the next question is, can you see your neighbors left and right to you? And I imagine you cannot see your neighbors without moving your head. Due to those hands now, you have a limited peripheral vision of 120 degrees. When you take down your hands, neighbors are back again. Because you are adults and what we are talking about are adolescents. And adults, due to the quality of this important organ, they do have a 180 degree peripheral visibility. Kids, when they are coming into school, they only have such a limited peripheral vision, which means their eyes are not fully developed. It takes 80, 90, 20 years until every organ is fully developed. And not every organ is developing in the same ages. And now we can understand that kids in such an age cannot sit still more than one minute on average. In the puberty, it looks a little bit different. Those students are passing developmental processes of muscles, of bones, of ligaments, brain and your entire sensory system has finished the developmental process. And due to that, those in the puberty, they are not so active anymore. They can sit still for 10, 15, 20 minutes, but this is the limit. After 20 minutes, at least 30 minutes, there should be a postural change to maintain the balance of body, mind, and soul. They do need 
equipment in the space which encourages them to get out of the sitting trap, stand and move around. Therefore, the environment is decisive for your natural behavior. What is the background concerning all that what we do know today and what is really underlined by empirical data? The background is evolution, which means for millions of years, people had been interactive with a mentally and physically challenging environment. Today, we are sitting our way through life, starting very early in childhood. Years ago, Maria Montessori, not aware about any research, but she had a lot of empathy concerning children. And she told everyone, watch children. And when you watch children, you can see that their behavior is decisive for the quality of the developmental process of body, mind, and soul. And what science is talking today, science is talking humans are biological organisms that evolved in nature. Therefore, we do need a natural environment. We do need daylight. We do need good acoustic. We do need fresh air. And we do need an environment where we can carry out a natural physical behavior regularly. Because when you are sitting for a prolonged time, then this is not a biological condition. And this will end in a wide range of chronic diseases. What is necessary to do? We have to reduce the quantity of sitting and we have to work on the quality of the functions of the chair. Which means we do need chairs which absorb and not block, absorb every physical behavior while you are seated. In that way that humans can carry out their natural behavior while they are seated. But even the best chair is a worse chair if you are sitting more than six hours a day. So get out of the sitting trap, get out of rigid chairs, carry out while you are seated a wide range of sitting behaviors, stand more and move around. Spaces, Learning spaces, living spaces, working spaces should offer a diversity concerning furniture, concerning equipment that you enable that humans have choices. As you can see here, how adolescents carry out a learning behavior with a goal for comfort, a goal for well-being as an important driver for productivity, an important driver for learning. We are born not to sit still. We are born to carry out a wide range of postural behaviors and we are born to move around. And due to that, you are always in the balance of body, mind and soul.